What up squad, welcome to the video and I know you're probably wondering, Brakes, why are you standing in front of this random ass house? The house is not random. This is the crib that I lived in when I started my weight loss journey in 2013. And in today's video, I'm gonna take you back in time. I'm going to revisit what a day was like for me during my weight loss journey. Every meal, every workout, every thought. I'm gonna share with you what I did then and what I would have done differently if I knew back then what I know today. Starting with, so my day normally started at 6.35. And I know you're probably thinking, why 6.35 breaks? Why not 6.30? I don't fucking know. 6.30 just felt too damn early. So I went with 6.35. All right, stop asking me stupid questions. All right, so after an intense battle with the dumbass alarm clock, the first thing I would do on Sunday mornings was weigh in. I would nervously make my way to the scale. Like, remember in the fifth grade when your teacher would walk around the classroom handing out report cards that not used to get in your stomach? That's how my Sunday morning walk to the scale felt. This was my weekly moment of truth. This was the verdict on whether I spent the entire week exercising and eating healthy for nothing or if it would pay off. I honestly wish I did not let the scale control me so much emotionally. Like, if the scale didn't read what I wanted it to read on Sunday mornings, it would put me into a depression at times. I would feel anxiety. Sometimes it would trigger binges. I wish I understood that weight loss wasn't this predictable, incremental process. There were weeks I would lose six pounds, and then there were weeks I would lose one pound, and I would be doing the same exact thing. That's just the nature of the scale. And if I understood this, there would have been so much more peace and ease in my weight loss process. After my weigh-in, I took my weekly before videos. This was a painful, awkward weekly ritual that I had to force myself to do because I was fat and I hated being in front of the camera, but I'm so glad that I did it because yeah, it's cool to see the number on the scale drop, but it's a different level of rewarding and motivating to see it weekly in video form. I honestly wish I would have done it daily. So if you're in the middle of your journey, make sure you're taking a lot of videos as well as photos. Every tip, every hack, everything that I learned during the transformation process, I put into this 12 week transformation jumpstart program. I outline it step by step. It's easy for you to follow. And if you're watching this right now, I have a special deal. There's a link in the description where you can get the program for 15% off. So take advantage of that right now. My diet was very repetitive. For breakfast, I always had three boiled eggs, some mixed fruit, a few nuts and a protein shake. It's a decent breakfast, but the only issue is this shit only tickled my tummy. <laughs> I just said tummy on YouTube. And it only kept me satisfied for about, I don't know, maybe 90 minutes or so. What I should have added to this meal is some oats and maybe four to six additional egg whites. So one of the biggest mistakes that I made with nutrition is that I did not track my calories. I did not track my macros. And I also villainized carbs. I thought carbs were the enemy. I didn't realize how important it was for me to include carbs into my diet. And because I wasn't tracking my macros, I was under eating protein. I did not have enough protein in my meals, which is why I didn't feel satiated longer. So if I can go back, I would have definitely added more eggs to this meal. And I also would have made it heartier, made it more satiating by adding a nice serving of oats, which would have been amazing. Cause Lord knows I was craving some goddamn carbs so after breakfast i grabbed my things and it was off to work it's like nah I, di I didn't have a job i actually lost my job which spiraled me into a deep depression which caused me to want to lose weight in the first place i caught a felony that turned my entire life around but i'll save that story for another video so what i did during the day was i wrote raps i recorded my own music and i was nice like i got bars for real and while i was writing my raps I'd be watching the clock, counting down the moments until it was time to eat again. For lunch, I had a dry ass turkey sandwich with provolone cheese and mustard with a gallon of water. And I hated my entire life as I ate this. This was a joke. And I ate this shit every day. What I should have had was a sandwich with a little bit more turkey, maybe some light mayo. If I was tracking my calories properly, I could have got away with a little bit of mayonnaise some Greek yogurt to add a little bit more protein, and a small bag of chips. Yes, chips. I would have added chips to my goddamn lunch. The issue was I wasn't tracking calories. And because I wasn't tracking my calories, I was so afraid to overeat. And because I was afraid to overeat, I was severely undereat. And it was simple. 
If I don't want to overeat, just track your calories, stupid. So counting my calories would allow me to have stuff like chips, which would have added more balance to my diet, which would have helped me feel like I'm not being so severely restricted, which long term could have been more sustainable. So of course, adding more turkey and yogurt to my lunch would have added more protein, more satiation. Protein, we just need protein. Protein, we need, need pro, we need pro. We I also would have replaced this with this. Very simple swap, but I actually hate mustard. This would have added a little more spice, would have helped me enjoy my meal a little bit more. So the exercise part of this video is gonna be a little emotional for me. I just pulled up to uh, the gym I used to work out at. There's a lot of emotions coming up for a few different reasons. Um, a friend of mine was my trainer for the first two months of my journey. He, uh, he had just opened a gym and I'm outside that gym. So all those Fat Bricks videos of me struggling through my workout <laughs> happened right here with my boy Mike Lambert, uh, AKA Mike the Fitness Junkie. I can't exactly say what happened, but over the years after I stopped working with him here, our relationship kind of suffered. We would come out here, we would pull barbells out here, you know, we would do circuits, I remember doing my first walking lunge here um, with a barbell over my shoulder. Like, I'm getting goosebumps right now. I think I did some things that, that hurt him. And um, we've had some conversations about it, but I don't think we've ever fully, really, really come to um, a resolution or, or come to peace about it. So I want to do that right now. You were a big part of my transformation. Yeah. You know, very early. I came to you a blank canvas. I didn't know, <laughs> I had never really worked out before. I mean, I had some basics, you know, damn, but you definitely pushed me. You created this environment that inspired me. What do you remember about that, that time? It got to the point that you were so motivated into it that some days you would come there with regular clothes on. I don't know if you remember, bro. The big old chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll never get you to say you was gonna go somewhere, man, and you stopped by the gym and made sure that you got your workout out of the way with That's your clothes crazy. on. You was like, no, and I was like, no, you going right? You were like, no, bro, I gotta, I got, I have to get this workout out of the way before I go anywhere. Yeah. I have to, I have to stay dedicated. Wow. Just seeing your growth from the point that we started from to now, man, has been wonderful, bro, seeing your journey. I know I need to acknowledge that I could have did a better job of letting the world know when I was telling my story, yes. I should have did a better job of including you in that and, and giving you your flowers way before today. You feel what I'm saying? I don't know if it was my ego. I don't know if it was, you know, all this attention. I, like, yeah. I don't know, bro. Like, I can't say, no, you know? I, 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 and I can't be against you on that but bro it was it was the force it was the everything that was built up that you i felt like you you was in that mindset that hey i believe that i can do whatever i don't think we've ever sat down and sat down yeah. and really like with clear hearts and clear minds right and, and ever since that first moment promise, ever since that first moment we had that conversation and we separated yeah this is our first actual moment yeah yeah serious up that's that's what's up man look man i love you man, bro. god is great man I love you, bro. God is great. For dinner, which was always at 8 p.m., I usually had some pale ass, dry ass, barely seasoned chicken breast, some frozen vegetables, and a bag of minute rice. My diet was very repetitive, bland, and boring. Now, repetitive is okay, but bland and boring definitely worked against me. So I think one of my biggest issues is that I did not enjoy my food. This is what my chicken breast used to look like. I was afraid to season my food. And I did not enjoy this. This was like a chore to eat this shit. Once I started seasoning my food, that was an absolute game changer. I actually look forward to my meals. And a big part of sustainability is actually being able to enjoy your goddamn meals. So another thing I would have done differently is I would have learned how to cook. 90% of my meals were made in the microwave and that's still true today. I think if I would have learned how to cook, I would have been able to add more variation to my, to my diet. I would have been able to um, really enjoy food even more than I did because obviously having to heat up my food in a microwave or, or eating frozen dishes, it, it limits the type of meals that I'm able to put together. So I think me learning how to cook would have been a game changer. So I definitely would invest the energy into learning how to cook. Look, I know I lost a lot of weight really fast, 
But it was at the expense of my mental health. My relationship with food definitely suffered because of my approach. I had no balance. I actually developed an eating order and I damaged my metabolism. So yes, I was happy that I lost weight fast, but it led to binging, right? I gained back 60 pounds, 70 pounds several times. It wasn't worth it at the end of the day. And I know no one wants to hear this, but slow and steady wins this race. Your body can change a lot faster than your mind and your habits can. So if you take your time and you let your habits lead the way, you'll be on a path to sustainable weight loss and that is what you want. Remember guys, the body that you want is owned by a higher version of yourself. So evolve. Peace.